r slash ask reddit by redmond dts people who work in morgues or with the dead what is the creepiest thing you've witnessed if someone's been down for more than a day or two they'll start decomposing from the inside out if the room is quiet enough you can hear lots of gurgling and rumbling as the gases and fluids are moving around inside and then you move them and they groan as the residual air in their lungs is forced out past their vocal cords Sometimes when people have died, and we turn them over to clean and dress them, they still have air in their lungs and will make grunting noises when moved. Scared the crap out of me the first time I experienced it. One of the dissident's grandsons faked a breakdown over the casket. He stole all her jewelry. Didn't take long to figure out and a large brawl broke out. Jewelry was retrieved. Two weeks later grandson turns up needing to be processed and buried creepy as hell. I worked at a funeral home for quite a while. When I first started, about a month in, I was working a holiday weekend. Only people working were the transport guys and me. They came to drop off a body and went right back out. I thought they were still there and needed to ask a question. I walked into the embalming area and this dude was sitting up on the gurney looking right at me when I opened the door and it literally made me pee a little in fright. Turns out the transport guys picked up the body from an area hospital. He'd passed away while in a slightly reclining position and rigor had set in. They couldn't flatten him out. Still the scariest moment in my career, even if I got a laugh out of it later. I was part of search and rescue for 3 years. I was in the scuba team so we were responsible for finding the usually dead people at sea. The salt water adds so much horror to a body. Not to mention the fish that usually will start picking on a corpse sooner than later. My creepiest experience was trying to find the body of a Jane Doe was missing. She was a prostitute against her will, brought over by human trafficking. Turns out she slid her wrist parallel to her veins and jumped into this rocky and sharp outcrop into the sea. We went diving in less than ideal conditions. It was low visibility and waves. My scuba buddy and I were looking at a route crop when suddenly out of the darkest a deep blue hand emerged from this little cavern in the rocks. It began twitching and moving and as we tried to pull the hand the rest of the corpse emerged. She was being picked on by Murray eels, hence the twitching, which emerged with bits of human flesh in their mouths. Her mouth was wide open in a scream position and her eyes were gone. You can see tendons and bones in her hands and the sharp rocks tore her entire body to shreds in various spots. Her toes were mostly gone too with some bits of bone sticking out. To this day it haunts me. The worst was pulling her out and swimming with the body as eels and fish followed us, occasionally picking on bits of flesh. Obligatory edit to say thanks for awards etc. I will try to respond to all the replies. Edit to change the term sex worker to clarify that it was against her will as suggested by some redditors. People who had been on blood thinner medication before they died can make for a rod scene. Saw a guy that had died looking out of his window so he was discovered with his head on the windowsill and there was a thick column of jellied blood from his nose to the floor. It was a bit freaky. Worked at a mortuary for a few years. We have methods to keep the jaw shut for viewing, otherwise it would gap open due to the angle of the head and neck. During a viewing the device failed and this gentleman's mouth literally popped open. The lead embalmer was not on site so I did my best. Ushered the family out of the room and superglued his mouth shut, but he didn't have teeth and supergluing just his lips did not work. It looked as if he was attempting to scream. I had to call in one of our other mortuaries in town and that embalmer used a giant needle and thread to sew his mouth shut from under his chin to his palate. You have smelt nothing until you have smelt the farts of the dead. Former CEBT. Advanced cancer has a certain smell as well. Not necessarily the creepiest thing but. The funeral home I worked for liked to embalm as soon as possible after death. I had embalmed a man that was dead for less than 30 minutes to an hour. He was still warm and rigor had not set in yet. I kinda just held his hand for a minute before I got started. Edit, wow I'm really happy this comment blew up. It really shows that compassion isn't dead. Thank you. My wife is a mortician. She's had quite a lot of wacky experiences. This is more funny than creepy, but once she was trying to break up the rigor mortis in a dissident's hip by flexing the entire leg up. 
Her grip slipped and the leg swung down, the heel cracking her right in the face, resulting in a black eye. She had to explain to people that she's not in an abusive relationship, she just got kicked in the face by a dead guy. Sometimes a fresh corpse will get shaky limbs. Make it a bitch to bag up in a hurry. I delivered pizza to a crematorium. Dude set down his pizza on a cardboard coffin to get money and I couldn't stop looking at the box on the conveyor leading into the crematorium chamber. I pointed out, isn't that a little disrespectful? The dude came back and simply said, oh don't worry about him, he won't mind. I helped with an autopsy where a woman wasn't found for a few weeks and her cats started chewing on her. My buddy worked at a crematorium and after burning the bodies they would have to rake out the stuff that doesn't burn, like hip replacements, stuff like that. I can't for the life of me remember what they did with gold fillings, removed before or after. Pacemakers were removed before burning I'm pretty sure. A lot of this stuff would be recycled for the precious metals. Rotated though the forensic path lab during medical school. Ended up seeing and participating in the autopsy of a high school classmate. It was completely without knowing at the time. Years later, no similar resemblance. But then I saw posts on Facebook about him later that day, and it put me in the worst funk for a solid week or two. All these posts about him, and there I was with his brain in my hands. Had a DNR patient that had just died. There was about 5 witnesses confirming death. So first step in these situations is extubation. I pulled the ETT and OG tube, gathered those in the vent circuit, turned around to throw it all in the trash, and then heard a really loud gasp and loud breathing and I damn near jumped out of the window, on the 7th floor. She freaking came back to life, her heart started on its freaking own. Jesus freaking Christ man. Jesus freaking Christ. That's all folks. Thank you for watching. If you like videos like this one, why not like and subscribe for more? Have a nice evening.